we uh, close our eyes and just lift up our hands to him? Jesus, just say his name, Jesus. Lord, we can do nothing apart from you. We get to abide with you, Lord. We can do, <laughs> some people just walked in, you're good. <laughs> we can do nothing apart from you. We get to abide apart from you. We can do nothing. Holy Spirit, I need you to speak this morning. I need you to be you, Lord. Help us come under you. What are you saying, Lord? I ask that everything that you're saying would be said and everything that you're not would not be said, Lord. I just come under your leadership, Holy Spirit. Help me, help her. I need you. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you. We love your presence. Thank you for extending what just happened this morning. Thank you that you wanted to keep going and we listened to you. It's so beautiful, Lord. Thank you for Radiant Church, God. Thank you for what they're cultivating here. Lord, we bless Radiant Church. Just begin to bless Radiant Church in your own words. We bless the leadership, the staff, the volunteers, Lord the media team we just bless them god refresh them during this conference lord thank you for this house we bless this house we bless every campus jesus i thank you for pastor lee i thank you for what you've given him lord thank you that he's been faithful he's been faithful in what you've done he's been faithful with a seed that you've given him jesus we bless radiant church we bless radiant church this morning we love you, Lord, and we thank you. And we receive the blessing that you have over Radiant Church, God. We come under it. So thank you for that. Thank you that we get to feed off the tree. We get to feed off what they've been cultivating and stewarding and just everything, Lord. So thank you. We love you, Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. Hi, guys. Thank you for coming. My name is Joel Figueroa. Figueroa, not... Figaro or Figueroa, it's Figaro, but it's okay if you can't say it. Um, I am from Dallas, Texas, a church called Upper Room. This is Garrett Hardy. Uh, Garrett Hardy is one of my best friends. He's also one of our musicians. He leads worship from the guitar. If you, you heard him last night, he may not have a microphone, but he's leading worship on the guitar. We both go to Upper Room, and you'll probably, I don't know if our, our other team is here, but they'll probably be here. They'll probably be the loud people coming in, so you'll hear them. Um, but anyway, I, I'm from Dallas. I've been in Dallas uh, for tw about 12 years, and then eight of those 12 years, I've been at Upper Room. Um, I went to CFNI, which is where I met a couple of us, obviously Gary and a couple. I don't know if it, has anyone been to CFNI aside from? Oh, you, of course. You, you too. What year? I went to. Oh, okay, that's crazy. I was there 2008. Yeah, so. Cool. We missed each other. So uh, I was there from 2008 to 20, I did four years, 29, 10, 11, 12, 2012. And then um, during that time, I was like, I'm in Dallas. Why am I in Dallas? I was pretty, I was pretty burnt out by being in church because I love God. Um, I just really didn't really enjoy knowing what I was going to get every time I went to church. That, I don't know how else to say that. Um, not against programs or nothing like that, but just, I, I wanted to, I needed to be wowed by the Lord, right? So, but I was like, in, in my, I was well, probably like 20, 24, thinking that I knew everything, so dumb. Um, and, um, but I was just like, whatever, like I'm bored by church, you know, but I'm a worship leader, which is so ironic. But I'm bored by church, and like, oh, kind of burn out, and also disappointed, you know, I just, I wanted the presence of God and whatever. So anyway, I'm like, you know what? The only place I know, because at that time I was, uh, I would watch a lot of YouTube videos. I was like, the only place I know in the world that has that is in Redding, California, Bethel Church. So I'm going to Bethel, right? And it never happened. Uh, <laughs> I never went to Bethel, and the Lord actually had me. That's why I did. I mean, I did. I ended up doing another four, a fourth year at CFNI. I graduate, I'm, and then I'm in Dallas uh, for like six months, and um, not knowing why I'm in Dallas. Like, Lord, why am I here? I'm living in this like really small kind of weird apartment um and i'm like lord why am i here so then january because oh, school ends in may i'm then from may until january january comes um i go to a trip i come back and my friend eniola which she's one of the worship leaders at upper room she's like hey you should check out this place called the upper room it's like your kind of people and i was like 
cool. Like, again, I had this, like, attitude, like, whatever. Like, church is boring. Yeah. So I went alone the first time because I was like, I know that I'm gonna, when I get there, I'm going to be disappointed because I'm going to know what's going to happen. Like, as in, not like I'm going to know, but worship, announcements, message, altar call, and we're done. There's nothing wrong with any of that. It's just that I needed to be wowed, remember. So I go up these, uh, uh, up this stairway, uh, uh, <laughs> and there's a vet clinic underneath so you can hear dogs bark as you're in church literally like it's like right now and we'd be worshiping and you'd hear like rawr, 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 rawr. so we're like hey, yeah it's actually really funny because yeah anyway i have so many stories about that um and so anyway uh i get there i go and i entered and if the best way to say it is i don't know if you've seen chronicles of narnia but when they enter the closet and they're like what is this where has this been i've been in this house for a long time but where did this closet come from and where did this land come from that is the best way to say it. i walked into this place and it was it was probably garrett would you say it was as big as this built right here it was probably as big as this place the entire church i would say and but it's like everyone is squished and there's people painting in the corner there's kids running around there's still kids running around all the time at upper room like uh, if, if you've been there you'll notice like there's just kids in the front but i was like this is pretty chaotic and i feel god like what and so i sat down and i was like okay like worship's gonna start and they start singing songs and they're it's beautiful songs and then all of a sudden the song ends and then they linger and i was like oh what are you doing like you're not you're lingering and you're waiting on god like i was like my antenna was like oh like i like that and so um and and worship you know worship ended and i was like so touched by it but what got me is announcements come and there's this uh girl that was over the uh this lady that was over the um children's department and she says hey um i'm over um it, it was called it's power, samuel school samuel school power kids and she said a phrase like she's like you know we believe that children don't carry the junior holy spirit children carry holy spirit just as much as you and me carry Holy Spirit, and they can listen to God. And, we're, and then she was like, you know, and we're training um, these kids to hear the voice of God. And for some reason, if I needed like a confirmation of where I needed to be, it was not so much worship. Worship was awesome, but it was the fact that there was a place where they were literally believing that children can hear God. And they, were, they weren't just hopefully believing it, but they were like, they were convicted about it. I was like, dude, I can plant my life here. I can plant my life here. And fast forward now i'm here with you guys in kalamazoo which is crazy you know it's it's been a a wild journey for our house we never could have planned what the lord is doing in our house it's a great honor and it's terrifying at the same time it's beautiful and fun but there's but we need the fear of god um because we did again we were we're a house of prayer that became a church and so uh people are coming in and 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 the lord is touching them and all and all we're trying to do is that we're learning how to steward his presence we're learning we're learning how to host him we'll always remain students you know once you become a professional that's bad you don't want to become a professional christian i don't want to become a professional christian you know and so i say all that to say that's just a little bit of my story I, i've been there eight years i love our family it's not perfect but it's uh why i who i it's shaped me i am a product of a of people that love god that i that have rebuked me when i needed to be rebuked which is often and have encouraged me when i need to be encouraged which is often um and so when we're on stage and you see us all there and you know we're going after it we are just a product of these mothers and fathers praying for us and 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 having covering you know that's why i love radiant church this place is and i honor you radiant church because you guys it's so it feels so healthy here it feels like there's fathers and mothers and then there's sons and daughters that will become fathers and mothers and then there's sons and daughters that will become fathers and mothers does that make sense um and i didn't realize that this conference was a leadership conference until after uh, we were eating last night. They're like, yeah, you know, um, this is a leadership conference. So are most of you guys here church leaders? Can you raise your hand if you are? <laughs> this is so funny. I had no idea. So last night when we were in worship, I felt like the Lord was really going to refresh you, even during this conference, because I feel like you've been laboring a lot. 
I feel like uh, your fervent and your passionate yes in the beginning has maybe faded away. And that's okay because it's not your job to keep the fire going. It's his job. And he will. He is faithful. He is faithful to rekindle. He is faithful to put more coals. All you have to do is just say, Lord, I'm, I'm here. Hi, Alyssa. Hi, our team's here. I love you guys. It just feels so good. It's family. I'm talking about you. So the Lord's going to refresh you. So as I'm speaking, respond to him. I want you to listen to what I'm saying, but I want you to listen to him more. And so as I, if, if all of a sudden I'm speaking and you want to cry and you want to lay on the floor, please do that. Like, I want you to respond to the presence of God as he's coming. Okay? Cool. Holy Spirit, I need you. Have your way. Okay. I'm following notes because if not, I'm going to be all over the place. So this uh, worship culture, right? Say that with me. Worship culture. What does that even mean? What does worship culture even mean? Um, I actually had to study what it even means because I, um, I found out what I was going to teach when I got here. I, I had an idea, but not really. And it actually helped me. So thank you, Radiant Church, for giving me some boundaries. Because if not, again, I would be all over the place. Um, so, per, like, personally for me, I've understood, uh, I have a couple minutes, uh, I've understood culture as a way of doing things. And I'm going to give you definitions and a lot of Bible. So if you're going to write notes, just keep up with me. Um, culture, for example, I'm Mexican. And part of my culture is, okay, we love to talk as we're watching movies. I don't know how you grew up, but if I'm watching a movie with my mom, she's like, oh, mira lo que está haciendo él, Joel. Oh, blah, blah. And then we're like talking and, and it's normal. But then I've invited friends and they're like, why are you guys talking so much? It's just how I grew up. It's just a way of, it's just how I do things. We eat dinner very late at night. Where, from what I understand, some people eat dinner at 5 p.m. <laughs> and I, honestly, when I go to friends' houses that don't look like me. <laughs> They're like, we're having dinner at 5 30. I'm like, bro, I, I have dinner. That's like lunch. Like a, like, that's like a late lunch or dinner's like at seven or eight for us, you know? And, but it's again, the way that you grew up is beautiful and that's, it's your culture. It's part of what you do. And I eat dinner really late. I've tried not to anymore because then I get acid reflux and no one has time for that. But, um, so anyway, but so under, we understand culture is, it's almost like understood right? But there is actually language for it. Thank you, Google, because according to Google, culture means it's the customs, arts, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or social group. So it's the custom arts or social institutions, like the customs, and I want to focus on customs. Um, it, Webster's defines custom as a usage or practice common to many or to a particular place or class or habitual with an individual. So like a, a, a practice that you do habitually, it's just, it, be, it becomes a custom. It's just understood. Um, so again, if, if, if a custom is a long established practice considered as an unwritten law, like it's just somehow we all understand that. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay. So you know that you're supposed to stop at red lights and probably when you were younger, whoever taught you how to drive told you, hey, when it's a red light, you stop. And now you don't really have to think about it. It's just a thing that you do. It's like you've understood. This is, this is a law. It's a, and the more you practice it, the more you're not going to get tickets. Am I right? So again, a custom. We just go accustomed to it. Um, so I would ask, what, what is, if, 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 if culture is made up of customs, so what is worship culture? What is the customs of a worship culture? Does that make sense? Thank you. Hi, Abby. Hi, Alyssa. These are our beautiful worship leaders, also from Upper Room. Abby's pregnant. Yay. Um, yeah. So, what are the practices of worship culture? What are some practices? I want you to turn to John 4 if you have your Bibles. So, but in order to understand what the customs of a worship culture is, um, we need to understand what worship means to God, not to you and me, to God. Like, how does, how does God define worship? How do we worship Jesus? So I want you to go to John 4, verse 21 through 24. John 4, 21, 24. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem you will worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. 
we worship what we know for salvation is from the jews i love israel but an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth for such people the father seeks to be his worshipers god is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth say that with me spirit and truth um i love blue letter bible okay and so I'm about to go deep in it. Like, it helps me process. Do you all, any of you use Blue Letter Bible? Isn't it the best? So, and, and if you're like a Greek or like a Hebrew scholar, I am so sorry. I'm going to try my best to say these words because it's, they're beautiful. I just don't know how to say them completely. But I want to I wanna define what spirit and truth is. So is, if worship is done in spirit and truth, what does that even mean? Um, so in the Greek, the, spi- the word spirit is pneuma. Say that, pneuma. And I love these definitions, guys. It's, it means the third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, co-equal, co-eternal with the Father and the Son. I'm going to read that again. The third person of the triune God, the Holy Spirit, the co-equal, co-eternal with the Father and the Son. Never, and another, another way to say it is he's never referred to as a depersonalized force. He, he, he's a person. He's not just a energy or like a feeling that you get when you sing a worship song he is just as equal as god the father so so it's spirit pneuma if you go a little bit deeper into that word it means neo which means to breathe to blow of wind so we hear like wind of god you know we call him wind of god breath of god so the spirit of god is the breath of god the spirit of god is god himself so spirit okay spirit and truth and i want to go into truth what does truth mean in the greek it means aletheia so this is an objective it's objectively so it's this is whether you agree or not this is the truth objectively black and white it's blue letter bible is one of this what it says what is true in any matter under consideration truly in truth according to truth so truly in truth according to truth so it's true because it's true because it's true of truth in reality in fact certainly so in fact certainly of truth so it's truth truth this same guys this trips me out this same word um aletheia is the same definition that when he says i am the way the truth and the life so i want you to grab that and then think about what i just said god is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so we must worship him in god and in god so we guys we need god to worship god this is so crazy right i'm not, I'm not even kidding i <laughs> i finished this an hour ago <laughs> so i was like what this is in the bible because <laughs> again i was all over the place i was like lord like I, I want to I wanna honor these people and I want to come and, and like teach something and, and whatever it is. And I didn't have anything until this morning. And I felt like the Lord all of a sudden, I mean, he just spoke to me with how I, I would understand. And when I was writing all this, I couldn't write it fast enough because I didn't, I've heard this before. I just haven't heard it before. Does that make sense? So again, spirit and truth. Um, but what, what does this have to do with worship culture? Um, the main um i'm just gonna read what i wrote the main custom practice of a worship culture has to be following his spirit and his presence the main custom if you want to have worship culture it begins with following his presence we are to practice his presence his presence is his spirit what we experience in rooms what you experienced today when uh the session overflowed was not a man leading you into it what you experienced last night was not me Lisa, and abby leading you it was his it was his spirit you, you experience his spirit. Whenever he walks in the room and you begin to cry, you're experiencing God. It's his presence is him. He is his presence. It's not just a part of him. He is, he is. I want you to do this with your hands. You know, when you feel something just as real as this, as you feel like your thumbs and your fingers kind of rubbing against each other, he's more real than that. And he walks into rooms. So he, hey, what's up, Caleb? So he is his spirit. Um, and as you begin to engage his spirit, there's one thing he loves to do, okay? He loves to talk. And he always has something to say about Jesus. That's his favorite subject. 
So we get into places, we begin to worship, and then he comes into the room and he begins to be like, hey, Jesus is here. And then to you, maybe in the corner, he's like, Jesus is going to provide. And to you, he's like, Jesus is going to heal you. To me, hey, Jesus is going to deliver you. He just begins to speak all at the same time. He loves to talk about Jesus. He loves Jesus. He's obsessed with Jesus. Holy Spirit loves Jesus. Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. Go to John 14, 26. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. And I'll... Oh, wait a minute. I have it here. John 14, 6. 26, sorry. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative... Even that. When the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will, will remind you of everything I have told you. So the Holy Spirit teaches us everything, one, and then comes and reminds us what Jesus has already told us. Because I forget sometimes what He's told me. Do you forget? And the beautiful Holy Spirit will come and say, Joe, but don't you remember he told you he was going to deliver you from that? Don't you remember that you are... Look, remember where you've been, Joel. Has that ever happened to y'all? You, you remember what he's told you already? Or what he's going to do? 1 Corinthians, go there with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. I'm kind of flying because I, I would love like five minutes of Q&A, so... Your spirits will catch all this because I, I can't talk fast enough, yo. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're here. And I thank you for these people, these beautiful, hungry people. I thank you that whether they feel it or not, they're hungry. They showed up here, Lord. They're seeking after you. There's a reason why they came. There's a reason why we show up in rooms like this. And it's because it's deep, deep in our hearts, in our spirits, we're saying, is there more? Is there more? There has to be more. Is there more? And I thank you, Lord, that you are the more, Holy Spirit. You are the more. It's a person that we're craving. Not an expression or songs or messages. We're craving the Spirit of God. And so we just, we realize this today, Lord, that it's you that we're craving. It's you that we feel even now. Thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. Just say thank you for your presence. Just thank him for his presence. I can feel you, Lord. Thank you. Um, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 and 10. That is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Hi, Gabe. Hi, Oscar. Hi, Julian. I love these guys. It's our team. I'm going to read that again. That is what the scriptures mean when they say, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Oh, I love this, guys. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and reveals and shows us God's deep secrets. Other version says he searches the depths of God and tells us. That is part of what Holy Spirit does. Holy Spirit will, is literally right now, it's 11.45 a.m. He is searching the depths of God and if we ask him, he will come and tell us what God is thinking. And he'll come and tell you, like, whatever situation that you find in yourself specifically, he literally has a sentence for that. He's searching the depths of God. And then if you think of Jesus, Jesus is an eternal intercessor. So then he gets the prayers of God and he begins to tell us what Jesus is praying over us. My gosh, it's a portal. Like, you could just keep going there. The, the more I talk about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's just so much in that. He is, he searches the depths of God and God is eternal. What the heck? So Holy Spirit reminds us of what God has already said in life, in our, in our hearts, everything, and also reveals the depths of God. Don't we want the depths, the deep things? 
And do you know what happens when we hear him? Do you know what happens in our hearts if we really listen to him? Something begins to be authored in our hearts. As you listen to God talk about himself, something happens to your heart naturally. You get wooed into something. He's called the author and perfecter of what? Faith. So I'm telling you, if you have a hard time believing in God lately, you're okay. You just need to listen to God talk about himself. If you feel burnt out, if you're burnt out and like at the end, you're like, I'm here because I was made to be here because our church paid for this. You're to you're okay i'm telling you it's okay to be burnt out and what i'm saying it's 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 not right but it's if if you're there this is what i'm trying to say if you're there you're okay you just need to, you, you need to listen to god talk about himself you need to hear his voice i need to hear his voice when we hear his voice everything that begins that was hard and like lord i'm disappointed because you didn't do this by now that kind of begins to like shake a little bit and crumble because then you remember this. I said yes to you because I loved you, not because I wanted to build my ministry, right? I said yes because I, you said yes because you loved him. So we just need, we need to listen to God talk about God. When we start feeling jaded and burnt out, I'm, I'm telling this for myself. I find myself in places where I'm doing ministry and I'm like running and then all of a sudden I'm like, what am I singing? I don't want to be up here. What am I doing? And then I'm like, Lord, I love you. But you love me and I feel like he tells me but I love you and just that little word refreshes my heart and I'm not jaded anymore but again it's an ever ongoing thing I need to hear God talk about himself and it's by his spirit that brings us to our next custom of worship of a worship culture it's called faith go to Romans 10 17 with me how does faith come Romans 10 17 It's me, look, up there. I wish I always was like that, though, because I'm not all the time. It's so funny. When I walked in here, I saw me in the little TV, but I'm the big TV. Okay, okay Romans 10, 17. So I'm going to read it, 10, 17. So faith comes from hearing. I'm going to read that again. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of Christ. And I love, it changed my life how I read it in the Passion Translation. Faith then is birth in a heart. So faith then, put your hand on your heart. Faith then is birthed right here. It's birth in a heart that responds to God's anointed utterance of the anointed one. So faith comes in our hearts when we respond to what God is saying about himself. But there's a response, right? I can hear someone talking and telling me, hey, Joel, if you jump over that puddle, you're going to be okay. But if I need to jump for me to be okay. Does that make sense? So I'm going to read it again. Faith then is birth in a heart that responds. Say that with me. Responds to God's anointed utterance of the anointed one. So remember what I told you. Holy Spirit loves to talk. And he loves to talk about Jesus. He begins to author faith in our hearts author we can't we can't we can't make ourselves go into faith we can't flex ourselves to go into faith we can't we can't um force ourselves to go into faith we can't bubble up faith faith is a gift and faith is birthed and authored by holy spirit we need holy spirit to have faith when people say do it by faith i don't really understand what you're saying what i what i'm what i've said before because it I can't do, um, it's, faith is not up to me. Faith is a response that comes into my heart when he begins to author something. Does that make sense? And for a long time, I thought faith was up to me. I thought that I was supposed to author faith inside. Like, I got to do it by faith. Well, I understand what we're saying, but I, I need to listen to God first before I do something. Because then I'm going to strive. No one wants to strive. I'm tired of striving. So he'll begin to walk into a room and we're worshiping. We're singing songs. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. God of love, God of love, God of love, love. You are love. 
Lord, I don't feel loved, but we're singing about you being love. I don't understand that. God of love, and why is my heart responding to God of love right now? God of love, you know what's happening in that, in that time? He's like, I am love. I love you. And your heart's like, begin to open, right? You've experienced that before. I experienced that last night. I don't remember in what moment, but in just in, in, in so many worship sets, we're singing these songs, and a certain phrase all of a sudden pops out to me. Almighty God of love. And I could move on to the next song, or, or I could sing, we welcome in this place, but what if I stayed in Almighty God of love for five minutes? And it's going to be a little awkward for a little bit. But what if I'm partnering with his spirit? And so we start singing God of love, and then Abby begins to sing, you are love, you are love. I'm just making up a scenario. You are love, you are love, you are love. Perfect love, perfect love, perfect love. And all of a sudden, perfect love. You are perfect love. All that is what, what all that that we're explaining and that I'm explaining is called faith in the room. He's walking in the room saying, I am perfect love and I will give you love and I will show you how to love. But he is authoring that. All I did was respond to him. Does that make sense? That little small utterance to practically to the almighty God of love. And it's risky because it's scary. You know, every time it's a little scary because I'm like, Lord, I don't want to make a fool of myself. And I want to, I want to sing a song and I want to, I, I, I love, uh, we all, I like the good job, Joel. But I have to die to the good job, Joel, because I want to leave that stage knowing that I was obedient to what he told me to do, right? And, but it's always going to be risky. Like the life of faith will always be risky. And that's why we need God. We will always have to be dependent on him. Always. We are supposed to be dependent on him. I have five minutes. Um, has all this made sense? Okay, so I'm going to finish with this. One of the most common questions we get asked in our community is, how do you establish a worship culture? <laughs> like, how do you do what you do? You know, we watch, we watch the YouTube videos. You guys, it seems like you guys are always on it. <laughs> but those are highlights, first of all. And <laughs> am I right? You know, but, but our leadership, our, like our pastor, Michael Miller, Larissa, like Trace, Jonathan Lewis, all these beautiful fathers and mothers that we have have made it a priority that our goal and our uh, mandate is to minister to God. We minister to God because he's God, because it's the first and foremost commandment. You will love God with all your soul, mind, strength, heart, and then love neighbor. We love our neighbors, obviously, but it has to start with, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, because I love you, Lord. Um, and the sim but the simplest way is that we are students of his presence and of his spirit. And so um, there's so many practical things that I could, that, that we could share with you. Um, but I, I think, hmm, I, I, I think that what the Lord is teaching me even now, even recently, I've been, I've been at Upper Room for eight years and um, I feel like it's taken me eight years to understand that I need to listen to God before I sing about God. That I need to listen, again, for real, I need to listen to God talk about himself, and then I can sing that. And, and practically, I love, I love having a set list, because a set list helps me communicate things that I'm feeling about the Lord. And we songwrite a lot. We songwrite because we want to communicate what we're feeling towards the Lord and towards each other, you know? Um, but I'm just realizing more and more, I need... I need to listen before I sing. I need to listen before I speak. I need to listen to him before I start talking about him. I, we're still learning how to engage him. He's an eternal God. He, and we want to remain students for the rest of our lives. And I feel like you being here and listening to me freak out for the past hour about like spirit and truth, you know, it's you are students of the presence of God and you are hungry for him. And our, our, our um, community is predominantly made up of young, a lot of young people. Um, and it's amazing. But then something, it just hits different when people that have been Christian for like 30 years still respond to the presence of God. Because then it shows me as a 31-year-old, I am going, I'm going to go through hard things. But if I can still cry when he shows up, that's the goal of my life. 
And so I don't, I love that we're young, but if you're here older and you're responding to the Lord, I want to tell you, we need that because it teaches me, teaches us that I could still keep following him. Yeah. I, I, we have three minutes. Thank you, Caleb. Honestly, I'm going to read something else. Okay. I'm going to read the Bible. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I, we're, we are going to have a, a, um, a breakout session with, with our whole team. So maybe we can save our questions for that. Is that cool, Caleb? Okay, great. So if you have any questions, I would, we, I, we would love to answer as many as possible. So uh, yeah, I just want to read this over us. Say this with me really quick. Spirit and truth. And then say faith. Great. Okay, chapter 2, 1 Corinthians 2, 11 through 16. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. Verse 16. This is what I wanted to get at. For who has known the mind, of, uh, the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Holy Spirit, I thank you so much for these beautiful people. I thank you just for teaching us continually that we need you to need you, Lord. We need you, Jesus, to be able to say that we need you. In our own strength, we get weary, we get crusty, we get tired. But when we hear you, when you lead us, all of a sudden we remember why we said yes to you, Jesus. We need your spirit. We need your spirit. And I thank you for every person in this session, Lord, that they are so hungry for your presence. God, I pray that you would begin to move in their churches and their communities like never before. God, I pray that you would give them what is their deposit for their house. I pray that you would give them their deposit and that you would remind them what have you given them for their house, Jesus. We bless every person's house here, Lord. And I just say, Holy Spirit, move in those communities. God, we are part of the body. We need the body. We need the body. So Holy Spirit, move in the body. Move in the body. Move in the body, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you for what you're already doing. You're already doing it, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.